Good morning. It's strange to uh, be speaking to you this way this morning. For our communion thoughts this morning, I would like to uh, go over a couple of things here from the writer of Hebrews. The Hebrew writer tells us in chapter 4 and verse 15 that we have a high priest who is able to sympathize with our weaknesses, one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. In Jesus, we find a person that we can relate to. He was a person who struggled, cried, hungered. He was thirsty. He was tempted. And he suffered. He was a person who was frustrated by sin and by spiritual stupidity. He was a person who trembled at his father's will. He was a person to whom God answered no to his prayer in the garden. The prayer he prayed the hardest. A prayer for himself to be delivered from what he was about to face. How can we not see, see him in this moment of terror? He was a person who, when he did what was right, the world returned a favor by crushing his body and his spirit. He became vulnerable, powerless, and suffered at the end of his life and in his death for us. In Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 through 28, we read, Now as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and after blessing, blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks again, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. At this time now, I'd like to ask you to reflect with me upon those struggles of Jesus, the sadness, his hungering, the thirsting, the frustrations, the temptations, and the spiritual stupidity, and even being forsaken by God. Think about these things that, that caused Jesus to go through what he went through because of us and for us. As Jesus did in, in his example, let us give thanks for the bread. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this first day of the week, this time that has been set aside for us to remember the suffering that you went through on this earth, the suffering that you went through on the cross to purchase our redemption. We thank you that we have this bread which represents your body broken for us, that we can remember your, your sacrifice for us. Thank you for your love for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Again, Following Jesus' example, I'd like to give thanks for the fruit of the vine. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you again in prayer, thanking you for the opportunity to worship you today. We're thankful that you was willing to come to this earth to suffer, to die, to shed your blood, which is represented now by this fruit of the vine, that as we partake of it, we will remember that blood that was shed on our behalf to purchase our redemption. Thank you for being, for being a high priest who sympathizes with us and understands. Thank you for your love. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Then at this time, I'd also like to mention the uh, work of the church still goes on, and the offering is part of our worship. And just concerning that, I'd like to read a verse of Scripture from the Old Testament of what God told the Israelites in Deuteronomy chapter 16 and verse 17. Every man, shall give his, every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God that he has given you. Thank you. Have a good day.